Hi, this is Piotr Walczyszyn, Adobe Developer Evangelist. Uh, so this is our four video tutorial about building PhoneGap applications connected to salesforce.com. Uh, in this uh, episode, we'll learn how to uh, authenticate and authorize the user in Salesforce using OAuth protocol. Uh, also how to configure remote access, uh, remote access in Salesforce. And uh, we'll see how to use a ForceDK UI library that I created, which is available on GitHub as an open source project. Uh, all right, so uh, to get started, uh, go ahead. If you don't have yet, uh, create new account um, on developerforce.com. Uh, if you have that account, go ahead and log in. I already logged in. And once you log in, go to setup. And in setup, there is develop tab and there is a remote access section. And here you can create new remote access. As you could see, I already had one configured there, but let's create new one here, gap uh, force demo. Uh, put your uh, email address and uh, put a callback URL. Uh, so the correct callback URL uh, in this case is as following. So HTTPS login salesforce.com uh, services all to success. Uh, once you do that, you can save it. And after successful save, you will see the consumer key uh, here uh, that you have to copy into your clipboard and we'll uh, need it in just a second. All right, once you are done with that, uh, switch back to your code and go ahead and open main view JS. So main view JS, uh, was the place where we want to create our uh, login um, code. And let's create new function. Uh, let's call it like login user. And I created also a snippet that will actually do the login for us and we'll go through it. So I have it here. There we go. So if you look at that, uh, that code that we just uh, edit, you'll see I create the uh, uh, three verbals uh, at the beginning. So first one is login URL. So that's the login, that's the URL uh, of your Salesforce instance. Uh, the next one is consumer key. And you, here you can uh, copy and paste actually, uh, or you copied that already and paste it from the uh, Salesforce um, uh, console there where you created a remote access. Callback URL uh, is, the, uh, is the URL that we also uh, put it there and it has to match the one that you entered into, uh, into Salesforce when you created a remote access. And the last thing here is we create an instance of a FTK client UI. And this is, uh, this is the client UI library that uh, I created for ForceDK. And uh, we just use the ForceDK UI namespace in the client and client UI class, which accepts uh, three parameters, uh, which we defined previously, and also two additional ones. So the second, the, the, yeah, the additional one is a callback URL, a callback uh, function that will be uh, triggered when uh, the, the login process was successful. And in this place, we can put some code that we want to uh, invoke, let's say navigator notification, and let's just pop up an alert box that we uh, logged in uh, successful login successful. All right, uh, once we're done with that, we can uh, uh, configure also the error handler, so it may uh, react to any errors. And at the end, you have to call login function on the instance of the FTK client UI. But we, before we go further on, first of all, we have to define the force DK UI. So we have to add the dependency uh, through require.js. So if you remember from the previous episode, we learned how require.js works and how it injects the uh, appropriate libraries or appropriate APIs uh, or references and dependencies as the application runs. So uh, let's copy that. We'll use this as a namespace here. So this is the instance, this is the verbal that it will be uh, injected, the force DK UI library. And here we have to define the dependency. So the force uh, TK UI library is registered under that alias here. And if you wonder where it's registered, so what 
actually JavaScript file it points to, you can go in, of course, to main.js, look into the require config section, and you will find force DK UI library here, and it's the path to the, uh, the appropriate JavaScript file that was actually cloned uh, during you cloned the boilerplate um, uh, project. All right, so once we have that, the last thing we need to do, we need to call the login uh, user function somewhere. I think that the right place really, uh, in this case, instead of initialize, this would be after successful render. So let's put it here and let's put login user. So when the render is done, uh, we'll uh, invoke login user, which in the browser running on a desktop will pop up additional window uh, with, a, uh, with a form from Salesforce. And in case of a mobile application, it will use a child browser uh, to pop it up with, and with the form and in order to user to uh, enter the data. All right, so let's open uh, our index iOS. It doesn't matter which one you wanna open. Um, it be, could be uh, Android as well. And as you can see, uh, I have a OAuth uh, form here to fill in. So I have to put my credentials. It remembers my login, but I just need to put my password. So like this, I log in. I have to approve that I allow or allow actually to connect to my uh, remote access and there you go you can see that I logged in and it popped up an uh, alert box with the login successful uh, message uh, the same thing if I go to Xcode and we already have the uh, project pre-configured let's uh, let's clean the project first and let's try to run it so it, we should see a similar thing so it should pop up a window with the uh, login form. So again, let's put gap force at out of me and gap force password. You can remember the user login. Again, we have to allow the application to connect. And there we go, we got an alert box with login successful message. So as you can see, it was very simple to connect to Salesforce to authenticate the user. Now the next steps uh, in the next episodes will be to actually query the data and uh, display it in a nice list and maybe then go and drill down into some details of the, in, of the data. All right, so uh, stay tuned for the next episodes, of course, and thank you very much and bye.